humans are pretty distinct on this planet for many reasons, one being that we only have one species. However, this was not always the case, and researchers are still uncovering evidence of other ancient human species. Although the definition of a species is also up for debate, it is currently accepted that there were at least seven different types of human species that evolved alongside Homo sapiens. They were Homo neanderthalensis, Homo erectus, Homo floresiensis, Homo denisova, Homo rudolfensis, Homo soloensis, and Homo ergaster. So, how did our species survive where others didn't? Join us as we take a quick look at where we came from. Evidence suggests that our species originated in Africa, but that did not occur in one specific time or place. It seems groups of humans evolved separately in various habitable regions on the African continent until the climate changed and allowed these individual groups to encounter each other and swap genes and tools. Although we have plenty of fossilized evidence of early humans, researchers use genes to track the evolution of our species, helping us get a clear picture of who we are descended from or interbred with. Some of the oldest human DNA recovered comes from Spain's Atapuerca Mountains. At the bottom of a cave, scientists found Cima de los Huesos, or the Pit of Bones. In the pit, they discovered teeth and bones from 28 individuals who died around 400,000 years ago. Scientists extracted a partial genome from the remains and found the bones belonged to the oldest known Neanderthals. Current DNA research of our species shows that an unusual level of genetic homogeny meaning that the variation in human DNA is significantly less than in other species. Some geneticists theorize that this is due to a near-extinction event that may have happened during the Pleistocene era, which lasted from 2.58 million to 11,700 years ago. This theory postulates that the human species was reduced to anywhere between 10,000 and 1,000 breeding pairs, resulting in a very small gene pool. Some researchers believe that this event, usually attributed to drastic climate change, forced a new human species to emerge and caused the extinction of many other human species. It is generally accepted that modern humans, Homo sapiens, began emerging around 300,000 years ago, although ongoing research and new evidence is emerging all the time. Today, the oldest fragments of Homo sapiens remains were found at Jebel Erhud in Morocco, where pieces of teeth, skulls, and jaws have been dated to 300,000 years ago. Most paleontologists agree that a trending cranial expansion occurred sometime before the second interglacial period that began the transition from Homo erectus to Homo sapiens. After this time, modern humans began to diverge from their common ancestor, with our genes showing that alongside us, Neanderthals and Denisovans share a common ancestor. Who this common ancestor was remains a mystery although many cite Homo heidelbergensis as the most likely candidate. As the Denisovans have, so far, only been identified through genes, they have yet to receive an official hominin classification. The director of the Smithsonian's Human Origins program postulates that East Africa was especially conducive to human migrations, allowing for a mixing of genes from populations spread across the continent. Unfortunately, Africa lacks the cold, dry, and stable conditions conducive to DNA preservation, meaning scientists don't have access to any ancient DNA from Africa. The lack of any DNA prior to migrations out of Africa makes getting a complete and comprehensive time frame for our ancient evolutionary history nearly impossible. Despite fossilized remains and archaeological artifacts that provide substantial information about early human history, without access to DNA, Fossilized humanoid remains are frustratingly open to a wide range of interpretations. All fossils that date to earlier than 40,000 to 100,000 years ago have different combinations of modern and archaic features. Without DNA to analyze, it is impossible to conclusively prove which fossils are our ancestors and which were destined for extinction. Researchers also find it hard to pinpoint precisely when modern humans emerged to look as we do today. One reason is that the process appears to have been distinctly non-linear. For example, a skull found at Omo Kabish in Ethiopia, dated to 195,000 years ago, seems to look like a modern human. Yet another found at Alura Cave in Nigeria looks more archaic and is only 13,000 years old. These skulls demonstrate the variety of humans that walked the Earth during our early evolutionary stages. The time frame in which the human species emerged from Africa also varies. 
Evidence has been found of modern humans living in Israel and the Mediterranean around 177,000 to 194,000 years ago. At the Mislia Cave in Israel, a distinctly human jawbone was found alongside flint tools and hand axes, suggesting that modern humans lived and hunted in the area much earlier than previously thought. Evidence of the oldest intentional human burial was found at Kafsa, Israel, which could date between 100,000 and 130,000 years ago. The interpretation stems from pieces of red ochre found with human remains and ochre-stained tools. Further evidence for the early spread of humans was found at Zirindong in Guangxi, China, where a 100,000-year-old jawbone with teeth looks modern enough to be classified as Homo sapiens. However, these early human excursions out of Africa are not a part of our specific evolutionary history. Although we belong to the same species, genetics has revealed that these early explorers ultimately failed to establish lasting communities. Although they did not directly contribute to our ancestry, they are still an interesting part of human history. It is incredible to think that all living non-Africans can trace their ancestry back to a small group of humans who left Africa around 50,000 to 60,000 years ago. These people were part of a landmark migration that seemed to have taken full advantage of lower sea levels resulting from climate change. More accessible land allowed our ancestors to leave Africa and head to the Arabian Peninsula, the Middle East, and beyond. It wasn't just Homo sapiens that left Africa, and evidence of other human species have been found outside of the African continent. On the Indonesian island of Flores, paleontologists have found fossilized evidence of a miniature human species nicknamed the Hobbit. They apparently died out around 50,000 years ago, leaving no DNA traces in modern humans. Neanderthals once lived across Eurasia, but unlike Homo sapiens, they died out around 40,000 years ago, although they left traces of their species in the DNA of modern humans. The other close cousin of Homo sapiens, the Denisovans, left such little physical evidence of their species that scientists are still clueless as to what they may have looked like or even if they were one or multiple species. Scientists studying human genomes in Papua New Guinea have controversially suggested that modern humans may have lived and interbred with Denisovans around 15,000 years ago. Although this claim is highly disputed, it has been proven that many Asian people living today have inherited anywhere between 3 and 5 percent of their DNA from the mysterious Denisovans. Around 50,000 to 40,000 years ago, modern human culture, in general, appears to have begun to evolve at a greater speed than previously humans started carefully burying their dead, dressing themselves in animal hides, making cave paintings, and developing more sophisticated hunting techniques. Hunting tools and techniques demonstrate the ingenuity of the human species at this time, from making pitfall traps and fish hooks to driving animals off cliffs. It wasn't long before humans began using plant fibers. The oldest fibers discovered to date were made nearly 35,000 years ago. The fabric, found in the Republic of Georgia, was made from spun and woven flax, harvested from the wild, processed, spun into thread, and then woven into fabric. Also, around this time, humans began fashioning a variety of buttons and bone needles. Many link this leap in technological advancement to the landmark migration from Africa, as it seems probable that journeying to new areas brought new challenges that humans needed to address and conquer. Many researchers also cite this time as the definitive arrival of modern humans, the first modern humans to live in Europe are sometimes referred to as Cro-Magnons, whose only anatomical difference from their European descendants is their robust physiology and larger brain capacity. They are thought to have arrived in Europe around 40,000 years ago, bringing with them art and music. Our ancestors remained exclusively hunter-gatherers until around 10,000 years ago, living in small nomadic groups. One of the first steps towards settling in one area is often given as the cultivation of wheat, which started in southeastern Turkey. Wheat cultivation and the spread of wheatgrass enabled humans to make permanent settlements with a reliable food source. Humans' dedication to cultivating wheat has prompted some historians to suggest that humans were domesticated by wheat rather than the other way around. As humans became more invested in agriculture, it prompted the Neolithic Revolution. Evidence suggests that the first truly agricultural societies first developed in the Fertile Crescent of the Middle East, with humans selecting and cultivating food to enhance certain characteristics around 9500 BCE. Researchers postulate that barley, peas, lentils, bitter vetch, chickpeas, and flax were the first crops to be actively cultivated after wheat. From the Fertile Crescent, 
farming spread to Mesopotamia and then Egypt. Meanwhile, in the Far East, humans were independently developing farming with rice rather than wheat as their main crop. Access to abundant food supplies meant humans began leaving more concentrated evidence of their existence. Farms allowed for permanent settlements, which led to more pockets of archaeological evidence, including permanent structures, tools, pottery, and burial sites. Agriculture also encouraged trade and intertribal cooperation, which helped complex societies form. However, as villages developed into thriving civilizations, this led to more conflict, and humans soon began large-scale fighting over access to fertile regions and resources. Although many theorized that static populations had more time to develop art and religion, studies of modern hunter-gatherers now suggest that people had more leisure time before the advent of agriculture. It seems plausible that static societies left more permanent evidence of their art and religion due to an increase in the importance of status within the society and clashes with other civilizations. It is also possible that these societies went to more extraordinary lengths to preserve their art and ideas, moving away from the oral traditions of their nomadic ancestors. Now, they no longer needed to carry their possessions as they moved between hunting grounds, and permanent settlements allowed people to create and preserve enduring art, religious artifacts and monuments, and written records, which helped maintain cultural ideas. The study of our evolutionary history is an evolutionary process in itself and we are constantly discovering new things about our prehistoric past. Maybe one day, we will uncover the greatest mystery of all. Why are we the only humans left? Do you have a theory about why Homo sapiens were the only human species to survive? Let us know in the comments below. How would you like to get a deeper understanding of history? Impress your friends and predict the future more accurately based on past events. If this sounds like something you might be into, then check out the brand new Captivating History Book Club by clicking the first link in the description. To learn more about human evolution, check out our book, Evolutionary History, a captivating guide to the theory of evolution, evolutionary history, and human evolution. It's available as an ebook, paperback, and audiobook. Also, grab your free Mythology Bundle ebook while it's still available. All links are in the description. If you found the video captivating, please hit the like button and subscribe for more videos like this.